Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here with Nostalgia Critic. And tonight, well, watch the step, because we got Mars Attacks. So yeah, think B-level alien evasion film. You'll get the idea for this film. So, without further ado, be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's get to it. This episode yeah, brought to you by Starlings. <laughs> fan sharing video reactions to movies, TV, and trailers. <laughs> so around. Intro. All right. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia. Hey, Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Tim Burton has gone from one of the world's most unique directors to mm. one of the world's most commercial directors to, you know what, just put someone in black eye makeup and we'll see if there it feels somewhat artsy. But believe it mm. or not, there was a long period of time where Tim Burton kind of had the golden touch. Really? From financial hits like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice and Edward Scissorhands mm -hmm. to critical hits like Ed Wood and Nightmare Before Christmas, his biggest disaster at the time was his blockbuster hits didn't always lend their ways to Happy Meal toys. <laughs> Ouch! A family Every picture. Every long line of success <laughs> has its Mars attacks. Tim Burton's mm -hmm. was Mars. Was Mars attacks. <laughs> this gotta be fun. So remember, franchise well, got did make other good huh? movies after this one, and not all his previous films pleased everybody. This was the first film that got people asking, what okay. is he thinking sometimes? The trailers, at first, seem really funny, with cartoonish effects, a humorously large cast, and as they never left out, Tom Jones. And yes, Tom Jones. It's not unusual to be loved. <laughs> what? It also came on the heels of Independence Day, so people thought it might be a satire of that. Not realizing that Independence Day was already supposed to be bad. Right? I think. <laughs> it looked goofy and enjoyable enough, but it was both a critical and box office flop. Even Billy Crystal made fun of it in song at the Oscars, telling Jack Nicholson, Sit back and relax. Forget about Mars Attack. <laughs> However, it's kind about of one of those uniquely immature dark films like Death to Smoochie or Bad Taste. So, is it Whoop. not bad, just secretly inspired? Or is it bad, just bad in all the right ways? Well, I'm here to Probably see if ladder. it's actually worth any of that recognition. Really? Is it brilliantly childish or childishly childish? Who knows? Let's take a look with Tim Burton's secretly brilliant blunder? Mars Attacks. So... Well, all I can say is, yeah, things are about to get wacky. Good way, bad way, it depends on you. Oof. And also, the fact that the... <laughs> take a seat and relax. Forget about Mars Attacks. Rhymes, like, I'll give him credit. Way to go, Crystal. <laughs> well, anyway, let's see how this invasion goes. Let's start the Mars Attacks. Well, it sets its tone quite clearly with its first big hilarious joke. <laughs> Cows on fire! Ain't that in the sign of an apocalypse? <laughs> this is clearly a much better Happy Meal tie-in. <laughs> After that, we get a pretty kick-ass opening Fox? with one of Danny Elfman's Jack most Black? catchy and somehow oh. threatening Ryan things. Haley. <laughs> Probably the top scum. But with such a visually pleasing introduction, couldn't they move the Earth a little bit more centered with the credits? My OCD will not stand for this! Unless, of course, it's standing in a symmetrical pattern. Eh. Flying saucers from Mars line up around the Earth, getting the attention of President Jack Nicholson. And yeah, I know all these characters have other names, but with these many celebrities, are you really gonna call Jack Nicholson Dale? Or Natalie eh. Portman as Taffy? Or completely pointless double performance as Jack, we love you, but what are you doing? Hey, what, 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 what are you doing? Galaxy is yeah. gonna be the best hotel in Vegas. Oh, well, that's gonna last. Yeah, not only does Nicholson play the president, he also plays a hotshot tycoon in Vegas oh, and... One over at the roulette. Play our anniversary and stay off of black. Did any okay. of that make you laugh? Because that's basically nope. all it is. I wonder if they really. just came on set blind drunk dressed like that and they were like, You know what? Shoot a few scenes. Jack Black isn't a thing yet, so we have to convince people there's more celebrities in here than they think. And yes, yeah. that's Annette Benning as his wife. She's kind of a new age hippie flower child, and if you took out her being so, married to Jack Nicholson, you'd miss... Hippie rich girl. Honestly, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't add anything, and half the time I have to remind myself she's even married to him. I think they've come to save us. Yeah, it's definitely a Though it would have been a lot more powerful if they let this scene in. Stop it, you weed, you baby! Shut up! But Nicholson is interrupted one? by... Nicholson? Nicholson? To tell the world about the Martians. 
and our world will never feel quite the same again. Oh look, his daughter wears black over her bed because Goth. Lydia. Next we have talk show host Sarah Jessica Parker who's dating news anchor Michael J. Fox. Oh, they want me to go interview that professor from the White House? We should have got that guy. Well, I can't help it if your people are too slow. She's just in a weird Ouch. mood because her Sex and the City survey said she was Samantha. She is clearly a Steve Brady. Ew. Next, we have Lucas Haas, Jack, Jack Black, Joe Don Baker, Christina Applegate, the agent from Beetlejuice, and the lady with curlers from Edward Scissorhands. <laughs> Surprisingly doing nothing of interest. You think putting such a strange combo together, something interesting would happen by accident? Oh. But look, Lucas Haas really likes donuts. Hey, Ma, you want a donut? He made the international sign of the donut. If you need anything, any donuts or anything, give me a call, all right? This will be his arc. Mm -hmm. Pam Greer is a bus driver who has trouble keeping track of her kids, while her ex-husband, Jim Brown, is an ex-fighter now working in Vegas. And if you're wondering what he does in Vegas, I honestly have no Security clue. Guard? He just walks around in this pharaoh costume. Because ex-fighters doing that is a draw? Again, mm -hmm. let's see if anything of interest is happening. Hey, Dad. Who's that? Neville? Yeah. How you doing? Man, give it back. Leave me alone. Not even by mistake. Will Martin Short hit Well, talk about a slow first act, huh? You'd think aliens would have just caused a lot of craziness, but no, they're just kind of treating it as an everyday thing. Which, let's be real, if the aliens did show up, like, say, outside night now, if they did show up when I did that, I would have called being... And call the psychic by now. <laughs> but still, yeah, we'd be probably freaking out. It'd be like a ambler on my phone, or at least a. Everyone be like, get to the TV right now! Or something like that, you know? <laughs> anyway. Getting on hookers make for some good comedy? No. The stress at work is um, unbelievable. Yeah, no. Guess not. Pick me up when the comedy starts. So many strange and colorful people led by a strange and colorful person turning out to be such bland and colorless <laughs> toothpicks. Mathematically, it doesn't know, seem I guess possible. they're saving it for the aliens. Okay, huh. here we go. The Martians interrupt Parker's TV show with Pierce Brosnan. Oh, and Pierce Brosnan's in this. Is he interesting? Maybe they nope. can tell us about our universe. How it started. Where it's going. No. On to the Martians. <laughs> Thing in my house. Oh, and Glenn Close is the first lady. God, there's a lot of wasted talent in this. What's her mm -hmm. one note? Well, they're not going to eat off the Van Buren China. Well, it's no donut arc, bud. Mm. The Martians at first seem to be the best part of the movie, with their funny design and unbelievably <laughs> bizarre language. <laughs> but you'll find even that <laughs> works thin after a while. For now, though, they're a lot more entertaining than the human characters. Even the study mm -hmm. of them produces some enjoyably surreal humor. <laughs> I've been finding a translating computer. All green of skin. Dark is the suede that mows what? like a harvest. What the hell does that mean? And for the record, we it's never so do find out what that means. I am strangely okay with that. It's like adding logic to the room. Just something should never be explained. Fair. But others should. Like, why are Martin Short and Michael J. Fox doing nothing funny? If the Martians land, will the press have access? Can we do interviews? We'd have to establish contact, uh, work out whatever communication problems, and then I guess we just see what happens. Why does this scene even exist? Is it know. to build up that Michael J. Fox is going to do interviews with the Martians? I guess that can be funny. Is it just for this one throwaway joke? Do the Martians have two sexes, like we do? Probably. Must not laugh. Must not justify pointlessness. Oh, okay. this will get the comedy back on track. I got Let me guess now. Owes me a lot of buddy needs a wake up call. What I'd like for you to do is uh, use that patented left hook on him. I'm trying to get back with my wife. Um. What? <laughs> I don't know. Finally, the man. Like I said, this thing's got a lot of wasted comedy potential. I'm not sure Tim Burton was trying to go serious with this, which... I mean, he got a lot of comedy stars, you think? You know what? Nah. Let them go wacky. You know, like the whole don't look up. But nope. No, they're just taking it seriously. I mean, at this point, you would think, Oh, come on. Can we just get to the aliens already? <laughs> well, I think we're about to get the wish, because here comes the moment when Mars attacks. Martians seem to be landing. Well, good. We can finally see how they interact with these hilarious characters. Hi, Jason! Hi! Jason! Hi! 
Or we could give them a podcast. I know they only say one word, but honestly, I still think it'd be more entertaining. Yeah. The Martians land, and oh, now using you. their translator, they try to communicate. We come in peace. But the Martians see a released dove and start firing on everyone. Okay, we've been spending 40 minutes building up these boring characters, but finally we're gonna utilize them. They're gonna interact with the Martians. Like Jack Black's dummy soldier is about to attack. Is he gonna kick their asses or find out he surprisingly gets along with them or? I surrender. Nope, just uh, eviscerated. Yeesh. Or just dies, and okay, yep. cool. Playing with expectations, I guess. All right, oh Michael gosh. J. Fox is heading towards them. Is he gonna try and do an interview with them or exploit them in some way or? No. Just turned into a green skeleton. Just dies as well? Okay, I, I, uh... Man, they are just they're getting really... rid of them fast. It takes Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay, well, does she give Why? them fashion advice or compare pets or... Uh, no? Change heads. Messed up. Well, at least she's still alive. I For now. I never thought I'd say that in a joyful sense about any of these characters, but at least it's another alternative to just dying. Okay, okay, so this first couple wasted. of character interactions with the Martians weren't that funny. We at least get a few cool set pieces, like this B-movie <laughs> autopsy lab, or this Dr. Strangelove-style war room. It's just a shame nobody's saying anything funny in them. Notice the highly developed cranial nerves. Again, I think they're just taking it way too seriously. The cerebral arteries. I think an actual autopsy <laughs> would be more funny than this. Okay, Tim, you've <laughs> got to film in some of these sets you thought were so cool as a kid. Can you actually entertain us now? Yeah. Anything? But the Martians, come on, they were pretty funny, right? They still gotta get a few laughs. What? what? Well, I'm sick of their voices now. At first it was kind of funny, but then they go Star Wars Holiday Special and have it be the one sound we ever hear out of them and there's no goddamn subtitles! Okay. Oh, let me guess. Ack, ack! Ack, ack! You sure this wasn't a troll movie? Probably. But it's cool. We have a ton of other hilarious stuff, like Annette Bening's deep social commentary. The human race doesn't deserve to live. An ex-husband and ex-wife still pointlessly being an ex-husband and ex-wife. I love you. I love you too, Byron. And a funeral! Uh. Uh. Again, what? Wee! Okay, bye. Be real, like if I saw this and like her Jack Black was, I mean, well, I mean, if I knew about this and like Jack Black was like, you know, in this, I think it would be a like hilarious adventure, but no, this thing's taking itself way too seriously, you know. Think about it, if it was like less serious, I think it would work fine, but here, Snorefest, I mean, you gotta agree with me, right? Anyway, moving along. Excellent. So the White House the thinks the Martians misinterpreted the dove as a sign of war, so they decided to meet up again in front of Congress. Again, this could be funny, the politicians trying to convince them to join the side, pushing their political beliefs on them. There's some enjoyable possibilities here. And they just straight up kill everybody again. Now don't get me wrong, it is a little funny that absolutely nothing provokes them this time, and the exact same thing happens. I get it. And trust me, this would be hilarious if the exact same thing didn't happen throughout the rest of the goddamn movie. Yeah, this is pretty much just the rest of the film. Why dedicate so much time to these boring characters if you're just gonna do the same thing to them over and over and over? It seems of Congress. <laughs> Yet somehow it's still not as funny as what's really going on in Congress. Mm -hmm. They take Pierce Brosnan this time, and seeing what they do with Parker and her head, at least there's hope that something interesting will be done with him. Or just do that. Or you Yikes, can do morbid. Less than what you did with her. Just take the head off and stop. Brilliant. Yes. Don't put it on anything. Don't morph it or change it. Just stop. I'm sure they did it Where's so they could get out this amazing knee slapper. This is terribly frustrating. I'm just not feeling myself. You know, there's pushing the envelope and then there's taking the envelope back, peeling off the stamp, and then neatly putting the envelope back in a drawer. Why? This does that. President Nicholson argues with General Rod Steiger about what to do. I'm not going to start a war. We have to strike now, sir. Annihilate. Kill. Kill. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Yeesh. You will believe 
you say that's it? Drama can come from Mars Sorry. attacks. There was a like seriously, they attacked. Like, I'm pretty sure if I was president, I would be like, that kid can't just kick alien butt. Let him have it. Jeez. Like, seriously, come on. I mean, at some point, you can, like, seriously? <laughs> Moving along. Pretty creative joke involving one of the Martians sneaking in dressed as a human, played by Lisa Marie. Not only is it funny how obvious it is, but it's even funnier seeing how nobody seems to notice. Yeah, nothing. The movements, the design, that like... the performance, it definitely gets a giggle. But even that goes on for too long. This could get is a it? laugh for, what, maybe a minute? They give us six. Six minutes of this one gag. And even when her cover is blown, it doesn't make sense. Her skin is ripped, revealing the alien inside, but the mouth doesn't move when she opens it. Is it supposed to be a bad effect? I mean, okay, the effects aren't great, but they're not really bad enough either to make it clear if this was intentional or not. Especially seeing how the mouth moves fine in later scenes. But whatever, at least they're actually interacting with one of the characters this time and not just blandly killing him off. Oh, oh spoke too soon. Well, they took care of finger and whack. Oh, come on, and he's, he's a sexual deviant. If they want this death to be more fitting, shouldn't she have bitten off? Well, downstairs. Something that would make him more short? Oh, she makes it to the president's bedroom to try and kill him, but he's saved by Secret Service. This angers the Martians, and to be fair, they do get a few laughs here. Their suit-up machine is pretty funny, using the Washington Monument to smash Boy Scouts is great. They even Yikes. bowl for the Easter Island statues. Honestly, I think <laughs> this was the movie people were hoping they would get. Okay. But that's no fun, variety, visual humor. Pfft, surely there's just Martian shooting shit again. Yep, there it is. But ooh, they shake it up a bit. Like instead of a laser killing the first lady, a laser shoots a chandelier killing the first lady. <gasps> Commentary! Ooh, look! Really? The boys who shot aliens in video games are now shooting aliens in real life. <gasps> Commentary! And the pointless tycoon character <laughs> who's selling hotels gets killed selling a hotel in his hotel! Mind-blowing how much this reflects us. I'd say this is textbook writing irony, but you know what? This yeah. is preschool how to potty writing irony. Dane DeVito, Pretty for much. example, tries to bargain for oh, his yeah. life by selling one of them his watch. You wanna know how much time was spent developing him? There's this. Am I the only one shooting crap here? This. Hey, you're Tom Jones, right? That's it. I like to yeah, think of it as his character from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia wandering onto the set and refusing to leave unless they wrote a part for him. Except that would make too much sense in a movie that makes none. And the movie. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, jeez, like, I'm kind of with him. Like, could have just had like hilarious moments, but no, you're taking a little too seriously with bits of like comedy. Like, come on. <sighs> anyway, we promised Tom Jones, so okay. there he is. He runs around with some of the stars, waving his arms. He apparently knows how to fly a plane. Are you sure you can fly this? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, I guess. That's about it. Tom Jones, everybody. Christ, wouldn't it have been a lot funnier if he was swinging one of those laser guns or saying <laughs> badass lines or really saving the day? You have Tom Jones as himself. That's such a weird cameo. Have fun with it. Here, he's just kind of here. There. And yeah, okay, I guess that could be kind of funny if the rest of the cast wasn't just kind of here. Okay. When a character gets killed off, it doesn't <sighs> even mean anything anymore. Lucas Haas' parents get killed in their trailer home. Oof. Bye. So, Rod Steiger gets shrunken down and stepped to death. Bye. So, even President Jack Nicholson getting killed by Martians somehow isn't as cool as it should be. They never took advantage of the characters they could become based on the people they chose to play them. Uh, look, mm -hmm. Christopher Walken playing King Louie is a weird choice, but they have the kid run into a cowbell, they have him awkwardly sing in his goofy voice, they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Here, the first thought you much. have in your head of President Jack Nicholson or Tom Jones fighting Martians is immediately funnier than what they actually did in this movie. Oh, but they put in an Wait eye drop of irony in every one of those deaths so that somehow makes it clever? Potty no, it's not. Every once in a while, there is a good joke. Like France thinking they made a friend, their attempts to use nudes totally backfiring, and probably my favorite line from the translator. Don't run. We are your friends. 
Scenes like that are great, and there needed to be a lot more of them. But instead, we just have a lot of running around, blasting, running around, uh -huh. blasting. What's happening over here? Oh yeah, running around, blasting. Yeah, more blasts. Maybe Jim Brown fighting them will be funny. Oh wait, this movie apparently decided it wanted to have heart, so this is now supposed to be serious. Even the waitress apparently tries to tell him not to go. I'll draw them away now. Go! No. I said go! Okay, that bye. wrenching The <laughs> Martians overpower him, though, and leave him dead on the ground. But luckily, Lucas Haas discovers the Martians' weakness, and that seems to be Slim Whitman music. It makes their heads explode. What's really? going on? I think it must be my music. <sighs> okay. Seriously? On principle, I can't like this. Not because I like Slim Whitman, but because I like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. They did the exact same thing to kill off the threat there, too. It's the world's worst love song that kills off the monstrous invasion. Except that film actually did have no budget and enjoyably bad effects. And a smart enough sense of humor so that you know it was intentionally awful. It was a satire of B-movies that was also a B-movie. I don't know if anyone knew what was going on with this. Aside from stealing from other B-movies so poorly that you have no idea if it's an homage or just straight up stealing. Look, oh, a parody stealing. can do an homage to another parody, but you gotta do something different. Doing mm -hmm. the same joke doesn't mean you're clever, it just means you're doing the same joke. Yeah, lame. But it seems to work. All the Martians are destroyed, Parker and Bronson go down in one of their ships. Oh no, they were so funny. And Jim Brown's kids have to get used to living in a world without their dad. Okay, how are you alive? Or not. Um, wasn't the last time we saw him dead on the ground, covered by Martians that beat the shit out of him? Now he hell? just has two scratches on his arms. Gus? Whatever. Look, Tom Jones. Yeah. It's not unusual to Mars attacks is lame. Just as random as I remember it. It's not like the worst movie or anything. There are a handful of good laughs and nice nods to Martian movies, but it feels like it has no direction. It doesn't work yeah, as sci-fi satire because there's not enough variety of jokes. It doesn't work as social commentary because the characters aren't interesting or developed enough. It doesn't even really work as a troll movie. What a funny middle finger that would be to have all these big names in a movie and all you did was shoot them and do nothing with them at all but they're obviously trying to work in ironic or fitting ways that they die, trying to give the film meaning. The exact opposite of what a troll movie is supposed to do. I'll say this, it is fascinatingly bad. Lack of focus is usually not a good thing for a film, but for a Tim Burton movie, yeah, his lack of the focus film. is always intriguingly strange. It's a boring mess, but it is interesting how and why it's a boring mess. So I guess that makes it interestingly boring? I don't, I don't know. It's a strange like... sum up, but it's a strange movie as well. True that. Thank you, honey. But don't you dare let this happen again. I'm the nostalgia. I remember it so you don't have to. <sighs> I mean, I got nothing really else to say. Like, what was that? Like, I mean, they had the, like, good comedy potential, but... Honestly, I kind of just wanted to sleep. Anyone else? Anyway, and there's one sci-fi movie I think you can skip. So, till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.